Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. all the oatmeal. It'll do us good to diet a little. Oh, now look, Lucy, I've had nothing but toast and coffee for a week. Pretty soon I'll be skin and bones. <laughs> Viv, face it, you could lose 30 pounds before your skin even gets near your bones. <laughs> Let's not get nasty. <laughs> Where's the butter? And the sugar? Honey, have you any idea how many calories there are in a teaspoon of sugar or a pat of butter? Oh, you're out of those, too, huh? <laughs> Look, Lucy, I pay good money for room and board, and I expect a little more for my breakfast than burned bread and brown water. <laughs> Mother Hubbard, how long is your cupboard going to be bare? Just a couple of more days until I get my allowance from Mr. Mooney. I just got caught short this month, that's all. Oh, so that's why you stretched that one chicken so many ways this week. <laughs> chicken pot pie, chicken a la king, chicken hash. I'm surprised you didn't try to serve us creamed feet. <laughs> that's a thought. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I just can't eat dry toast. And I don't like my coffee black. I'll have a bite to eat downtown before I get my hair done. Oh, that explains why you're so grumpy. I am not grumpy. Oh, yes, you are now, Viv, honey. But I don't mind. You are always in a foul mood when your roots need retouching. <laughs> Lucille Carmichael, I will match my roots against your roots anyway. <laughs> At least mine come in black instead of gray. <laughs> Is that so? Yes, that's so. Now you listen here, Vivian Bagley. Don't you dare. The best is here. Talk to me like that. <laughs> uh -oh. What kind of sandwiches do we have today, Aunt Lucy? Delicious peanut butter. Again? Well, now, it's very nourishing. It's also very boring. Gee, Sherman, I don't understand you. To me, peanut butter is the only thing that makes life bearable. <laughs> peanut butter. That's all we eat around here is peanut butter. Goodbye, dear. Bye. I must say, Sherman gets more like you every day. That's right. We're both suffering from malnutrition. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Viv, go get your hair done. Don't rush me. I'll go when I'm good and ready. All right. And I'll come back when I'm good and ready. All right. Don't bother to fix lunch for me. I don't think I could take another one of your disagreeable meals. Well, the meals aren't the only thing that are disagreeable around here. Well, if that's the way you feel, maybe I'll stay away for dinner, too. That's fine with me. You can stay away for breakfast, too. Are you suggesting that I stay away permanently? I didn't say that, but if that's what you want, go ahead. Is that what you want? It is, if that's what you want. <laughs> well, okay. After I get my hair done, I'm going to find a new place to live. Do that. You just do that. All right, I will. Now, only your hairdresser and I know <laughs> what in the world is wrong with Mrs. Bagley. Oh, we just had a terrible fight. Oh, another one of those. Well, this one is serious. She got all in a huff just because I didn't have oh, a little please, pat of please, butter please, and a please. teaspoon of 
Please, Mrs. Carmichael, please, worried about please, you. I beg of you, spare me the grubby details. <laughs> I came over here to discuss your finances. Well, I want to have a talk with you, too. Your financial affairs are in the worst state they have ever been in. But I need money right away. The only way you will get any money is to buy a small printing press and learn how to draw a picture of George Washington. <laughs> It isn't that bad. Oh, yes, it is. You're spending more than you have. Now, the first thing you have got to do is raise Mrs. Bagley's rent. Well, that is going to be a little hard to do. Why? Because she just decided to move out. Good <laughs> grief! Oh, what a tragic loss. Oh, Pooh. I got a lot of other friends. I wasn't referring to her friendship. I was referring to the monthly check. Well, I guess this will put a little crimp in things. Crimp? You are on the verge of bankruptcy. Boy, a little crimp goes a long way. The first thing we must do is get you a new tenant. A new tenant? I'll put an ad in the paper right now. Wait a minute. Uh, you can't rent Viv's room. Why not? Well, it, it just doesn't seem decent. It isn't even cold yet. <laughs> no, I'm not ready to rent Viv's room yet. Very well. Perhaps you're right. You may need that room later for the sheriff. The sheriff? Well, after all, he might as well be comfortable while he's waiting for you to obey the eviction orders. <laughs> someone over to look at the room. Mom? Yes, dear? Do we have to rent to some stranger? Oh, I'm afraid so, honey. We need the money. Do you think Aunt Viv will ever come back? Well, it doesn't look like it. Haven't heard a word from her since she huffed out of here with all of her clothes. Well, Sherman told Jerry they're just miserable in that motel. Who cares? You do. There he is. Hello, Mr. Mooney. You! <laughs> They're home. Oh, she's a lovely lady. She's looking for a place for herself and her son. And I've already quoted her a price five dollars higher than Mrs. Bagley was paying. Oh. <laughs> come in, come in. Mrs. How do you do, Mrs. Schaefer? And this is my son, Bob. Hello, Hello Bob. How are you? And this is my daughter, Chris. Hello. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh. You know, Mom, I think I'm going to dig this pad. I sure hope our gig lasts a long time. What'd he say? He thinks Chris is very attractive, and he hopes our booking at the Elm Tree Inn will be a long one. Oh, you're in show business. Oh, yes, yes. Mrs. Schaefer is a singer, and her son plays the drums. Oh, how wonderful. Well, I sure hope your gig is a long one. <laughs> how would you like to see the pad? Uh, <laughs> room? I sure would. Oh, well, fine. It's right up there. Yes, I think I know where it is. Yeah. Just follow Mr. Mooney. I sure hope you like the room, Mrs. Schaefer. So do I. If I have to stay one more night in a hotel room, I'll have the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope they decide to stay. Oh, me too. Gee, imagine. We'll have real showbiz people living right under our roof. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? Oh, he sure is. <laughs> <laughs> I see you've changed your mind about having a stranger live here. Well, he's no stranger. He's a doll. <laughs> well, it looks like you have a couple of boarders. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, boy, that room is a nut's whistle. Well, I'm so glad you like it. Good. Well, it's all settled. I'll get the stuff out of the car. I'll help you. Crazy. <laughs> Now, then, I have the lease all made out here, so if you ladies will just sign. Robert, now remember, don't play the cymbals too loud so they can hear Mother sing. Okay. And, Bill, you know how to come in on that thing. Right. And, Marl, you wait for that one, two, up a lady. Okay, you, know how, you know how it goes. Hi, Lucy. Hi. Oh. 
fellas, Lucy Carmichael. Hi. This is Marl and Bill. Hello. Uh, hiya, cats. Uh, I just know you're going to be a bunch of swinging gates. What'd she say? <laughs> she means uh, play it cool like nervous, man. Oh, I'm hip. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Do you mind if I listen? Oh, not at all. Thank you. I'll turn on the tape. All right, get that tape on. Okay? Okay, Mom. <laughs> committee meeting go? Oh, just grim. What happened? Well, we still don't have a band for the junior hop. Les Brown and Stan Kenton both turned us down. Why? I don't know. We offered them $75. <laughs> well, there must be somebody you can get if you're paying that kind of money. Yes, but who? We don't have much time. The dance is a week from Friday. Well, too bad. Mom? Do you suppose that I could get Bob and his combo for $75? The way he looks at you, I think you could get him for free. Although I think his mother might cost a little more. Well, he needs the band. I'm gonna ask him right now. Good luck. Thank you. Hi, sweetheart. Is the band gonna rehearse again this afternoon? That's right. If I have to go up that lazy river one more time, I'll get seasick. <laughs> oh, now, Jerry, they have to practice that because it's their theme song, and they want it to be perfect for tonight's opening. But they must have played it a hundred times. Thirty-two. <laughs> They're paying boarders, and if it's their business, if they want to play the same tune over and over. And over and over and over. Never mind now. I'm going to Peter's house. It's so peaceful there, his whole family is tone deaf. Make sure you get home before dark. Dream a dream of me.
Oh, yeah, honey? <laughs> Do you have any more of those earplugs? No, uh, afraid not. Then I'm going to Randy's. <laughs> Just a minute, young man. Let me see that shirt. You're not going anywhere until you put on a clean shirt. A clean shirt? Randy will think I'm a dude. You have a long way to go before you become a dude. Now, march. to say. Now, it isn't easy, so I don't want you to say a word until I'm all finished. I came over to apologize for acting so grumpy the other morning. <laughs> After all, you usually serve pretty good meals, considering the little bit of money that you have to spend on them. I really thought that was delicious chicken hash. <laughs> and I'm very sorry for what I said about your hair. After all, just between you and me, there are plenty of silver threads among my dyed gold. <laughs> you know, you are my very best friend, so what do you say we let bygones be bygones, huh? Sherman and I would like to move back in and be your tenants again if you want us to. Well, Lucy, what do you say? <laughs> well, I if I'm big enough to come over here and apologize, the least you could do is give me the courtesy of an answer. <laughs> oh, you're impossible. I'll never speak to you again as long as I live. Anymore. Oh, thank goodness. The guys in the van are giving me a ride over to Randy's. Oh, okay, honey. <coughs> and another. <laughs> in my ears. Oh. Viv, did you say you wanted to make up? I sure do. Oh, so do I. Oh, boy, have I missed you. You have? You bet I have. I missed you, too. <laughs> and she rehearses all day with her band. Mm -hmm. She's very good, but you can get too much of a good thing. <laughs> oh, poor little thing. <laughs> you rented my room. <laughs> well, now, well, it wasn't my fault. It was Mr. Mooney's idea. When he found out that your room was vacant, he almost broke out in hives. <laughs> well, I guess we can't move back in here after all. Now, now, wait a minute. Roberta's awfully nice, and maybe if I talk to her and explain things, maybe she'd move out. Do you really think she would? Boy, I hope so. Come on, we'll go talk to her right now. Good. Lucy, Lucy, can I talk to you? Uh, I was just coming in to talk to you. Oh, uh, Mrs. Bagley, this is Mrs. Schaefer. How do you do, Mrs. Bagley? How do you do, Mrs. Schaefer? Uh, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? My agent just called. I've got an audition at the Copa in New York Friday afternoon. Oh, that's just wonderful. Yeah, but now everything seems to be all whopper-jawed. Whopper-jawed? Yeah. You see, if they like me, I have to leave right away. Would you consider letting me out of my lease? Well, I... That, uh, that's, uh, that's a lot to ask, but I, uh, I, I... I think maybe I could do that. Oh, thank you, thank you. That... Oh! Friday afternoon! What? Bob promised to play for Chris's dance. Oh, I forgot all about that. Well, Chris will just have to find another band in a hurry. Oh, no, she won't. 
Bob promised to play for that dance, and I've always taught Bob to keep his promises. Well, what'll you do? Can you get another band for your audition? Well, I can't afford another band. Well. I guess it's just goodbye, Copa. And hello, motel. <laughs> uh, now, wait a minute. Uh, I, I know where you can get another band for free. You do? Yeah, it's just for the audition, isn't That's it? That's all, just for well, the audition. Well, now, don't you worry about a thing, Roberta. I have just the group for you. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Up a lazy river by the old mill right now. No, I, I haven't played since the Elks Parade two years ago, and my lip is still in very good shape. <laughs> I'm surprised Roberta agreed to go ahead with this audition after she heard us play yesterday. Well, we're better than nothing. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> well, we can't be too bad or we wouldn't be auditioning at the Copa. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes, Lucy. Oh, hi, Roberta. Hi. Gentlemen, this is not my regular band. These are friends of mine that came over to play for me. Yes, I'm Lucy Carmichael on the skins. This is Vivian Bagley on the old 88. And this is Theodore Mooney on the slush pump. <laughs> I think we'll start off with Bill Bailey. Won't you please come home? That'll be fine. Okay. One. Two, won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come home? I've cried the whole night long. You do the cooking, honey, and I'll pay the rent. You know you done me wrong. Never look that lady either. You threw me off. Had nothing but a fine Have you here at the Copa? I'll see you in the office. Oh, well, oh, 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 oh,
coffee. That's all? Well, the kids ate all the oatmeal. It'll do us good to diet a little. Oh, now look, Lucy, I've had nothing but toast and coffee for a week. Pretty soon I'll be skin and bones. <laughs> Viv, face it. You could lose 30 pounds before your skin even gets near your bones. <laughs> Let's not get nasty. Oh. Where's the butter? And the sugar? Honey, have you any idea how many calories there are in a teaspoon of sugar or a pat of butter? Oh, you're out of those too, huh? <laughs> Look, Lucy, I pay good money for room and board, and I expect a little more for my breakfast than burned bread and brown water. <laughs> Mother Hubbard, how long is your cupboard going to be bare? Just a couple of more days until I get my allowance from Mr. Mooney. I just got caught short this month, that's all. Oh, so that's why you stretched that one chicken so many ways this week. <laughs> chicken pot pie, chicken a la king, chicken hash. I'm surprised you didn't try to serve us creamed feet. <laughs> that's a thought. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I just can't eat dry toast. And I don't like my coffee black. Oh, I'll have a bite to eat downtown before I get my hair done. Oh, that explains why you're so grumpy. I am not grumpy. Oh, yes, you are now, Viv, honey. But I don't mind. You are always in a foul mood when your roots need retouching. <laughs> Lucille Carmichael, I will match my roots against your roots anyway. <laughs> At least mine...